Well, I want to take this opportunity to congratulate our National Flag Carrier Cayman Airways on its 40th anniversary and to thank the staff, the entire staff, the management team and the board of directors, both present and past, for all of their hard work and dedication over the years and for helping us and the country to maintain and support our National Flag Carrier Cayman Airways. Congratulations on your 40th anniversary. We started here with nothing. We had a logo, which was a circle with a triangle through it in Cayman Airways, which we, somebody in Laxa developed. And then we got our first back 111 and Mr. Norman Budden called up and said to me, um, Captain Thompson, how are we gonna paint this airplane? And uh, David Black and myself sat in, in Miami with some colored pens and did three paint schemes on that, which British Airways artists put to scale. But there was nothing, you had to do everything from scratch as the old people talk about. When I came here to fly the, the DC-3, there was no ops manual. And I got an old ops manual out of BWIA who had parked DC-3s years before. And we um, doctored it up best we could to suit ourselves. And that's what we used to fly the um, DC-3 with. So it was, it was a challenge putting Cayman Airways together. There was nothing here to start with. Trilander was a three-engine contraption that was used actually with great reliability on the local service. And it had replaced the DC-3 and Avro and there were other things supplementing it, but we were flying that as well. Well, we started out on the back 111, which, you know, is no longer in existence. And we literally on the back 111 on a one hour flight, we served two rounds of drinks and a hot meal. We had no trolleys to push down the aisle, so all of this had to be done on trays, or we would just stack them up, you know, the meals in front of us and pass them out. We literally walked down the aisles and opened every air vent. Nowadays, I don't see that happening. Um, we crossed all of our seat belts, so when the pastor came, he didn't have to dig between the seats to get out the seat belt. You know, um, we stood stationed from the front to the middle to the back. Passengers never lifted bags in those days. We ensured that we put up our passenger bags. Of course, there were those who did get, get to it before we did, but we always made ourselves available. So for us, the work was much more difficult, and you know, timing was everything. The brainchild of the late Jim Borden, Cayman Airways has been a national treasure for these islands, ferrying passengers to the sister islands, Jamaica and to the United States. The Cayman Airways is the forerunner of Cayman Brack Airways, which was started in uh, 1953 or 54. That airline provided services between Grand Cayman and Cayman Brack, and, and for a later on, on to Little Cayman as well. But in 1968, um, it was decided that government should become involved in establishing its own airline in order to guarantee continued service for travel between here and uh, Miami, Florida mainly, which was our main gateway at that time. And uh, I think it was in 1972 then, uh, we started operating to Miami under the name of Cayman Airways. 1976 to 1984, when Mr. Jim was the Minister of Tourism and Minister of Aviation, um, I first went along with Sir Vassell uh, Johnson and Mr. Haig Borden to Costa Rica and negotiated the purchase of 60% of the then company. Um, the reason there was that at the time Laxa had been stopping here for f refueling, but as longer range jets came in, um, 
they were beginning to pass us by. The government had reached a stage and the country's development had reached a stage where the, sh the airline should be totally owned and operated by the Cayman Islands government. And um, I think that was uh, taken over then in, in um, 1978, I believe it was. I think the other thing that made it, made the, uh, the airline those early days so enjoyable and stuff was that whole little terminal being so unique, you know, I mean, it was a, it was, you know, it was really a little old shack and stuff and uh, it was nice, it was very comfortable and enjoyable, you know. But what it was was a construction shed for the construction of the original airport. That's where the laborers that were brought, the, the, the engineer, everybody lived there, the Jamaicans came down here and built it in the early uh, 50s. And when I joined in 1978, um, there was 30 employees with Cayman Airlines, because that's how the ID numbers were generated in those days. And although I was, um, the, the pilots were eight, four captains, four first officers, the total uh, complement to run the airline was 30 people. Of course, the maintenance was contracted out to Aviatech, uh, Aerotech in Miami, and a lot of services were contracted out. So. The airline operated one airplane with 30 people. I don't know what is the numbers today, but I would think 350, 400. We were the second group of people starting. We actually flew with Laxa Airlines, and I think back then it was only one Cayman Airways flight attendant, English speaking, with the Laxa crew. You worked long hours. We didn't have days off or anything like that. We'd fly from out of Miami, Miami, Cayman, Kingston, return back up. Very little money back then. Um, we ate a lot of tuna fish off the flight, <laughs> <laughs> and we all pulled our money, tuna fish and soup, and um, you know, we were based in Miami, and then I think they separated us, and some yeah. came here. We had this slogan, uh, and matter of fact, I, I helped develop that slogan, uh, Cayman Airways, fly with friends, fly with the friendly family airline, and um, it was a family airline. When I started back using the 727-200 series aircraft, we had the 727-200s, the 737-300s, the 737-400s, the Shorts 330, which was the one that used to go between uh, Cayman Brac and Little Cayman. A 30-seater uh, involving one cabin crew member and a full service on board. We had what you call the Avro, who did a 48-seater and so forth, and it, um, that thing, we called it shake and bake. No matter what the weather was like and how good the pilot was, somehow between me and the brack, she shook. In the early days, there was a lot of camaraderie too with, the, with the passengers. They used to know who was flying and they come on board and say, you know, hello. And, uh, it was uh, it was a nice experience. When I was flying in the 70s and the 80s, they we knew our passengers. It was a small, you know, airport was small. You walk through the airport, and you know, you saw Mr. So and So sitting there. He didn't like flying. Um, while the rule was that you don't open the bar on the ground, that now came the exception that you get a scotch on a rock red from Mr. <laughs> So-and-so, or he couldn't fly. Where, so we knew our passengers, and I think that is missing today, that the passengers are not so well recognized. And, and, and we had passengers that would call the reservation office and wanted to find out when this specific crew was flying. Because I'm um, not patting myself on the shoulder, but we were the best. I mean, there was no question about it. We were the best. It was a, a mixed people, um, but they all dressed in their business attire. Whether they were the you know person going on a shopping trip, they were dressed as if they were going on a business trip. You know, so dress codes have certainly changed, even with the general public. Over the years, for us, I would say here at Cayman Airways, we've gone um, online check-in. For us, that's a great thing. We're pretty much keeping up with the times. And for me, that, that's great. And I think we're very competitive today. I'm very thankful, I, I mentioned earlier, about serving hot meals, because I think uh, other airlines just don't do that anymore. They hand out small peanuts. We don't do that. We take pride in what we do and what we give to our people, and that's what makes us very special. So I'm very thankful that we've kept that. Cayman Airways is the bridge to Cayman Brac and Little Cayman. Two Caymanian women have been at the helm of the airline over the years. I started at the bottom. I grew with this company. I started as a customer service agent in 1988. Um, within 10 years, I was actually manager in, in Cayman Airways and the Brac. At the time, flights were basically four flights per day. They were very slow. Um, now we have flights back to back, so it's very busy. As a station manager, I do my managerial work. Um, 
and when I'm not doing that, I'm helping with customer service, I check in passengers, and I basically do everything. In 2000, when I was part-time customer service agent, in 2003, I went to full-time and I, they sent me over to Little Cayman to open the station, and then I came back in 2004, and I was a full-time customer service agent, and then in 2005, I became the station manager up until now. We're such a small station here, you know, I do just about everything. I help the girls check in, I go in and meet the flights, I do the training just like them to show them that even station managers do it. How I've seen it change is that it's getting higher and higher in passenger capacity and it's, it's busy like when we, in holidays, mostly on holidays and when we have special functions either in Grand Cayman or Cayman Rock, that's when it gets really busy we have to put on extra flights. Apart from that it's kind of quiet and just flowing along. We do have full flights but they're not like extremely busy. The national airline has flown to many destinations over the years. We had Philadelphia, Baltimore, yes, uh, Turks and Caicos, uh, well currently we're in Cuba, New York, Boston. How many can you remember any other? Um, when I flew Rose, we didn't do, we want that international. Oh, sorry, Ellen. <laughs> I'm from a different school. <laughs> when uh, Jamaica, for us, was Jamaica, Houston, and Miami. Mm -hmm. And then there were times, like one, uh, for a year, I think, maybe less, don't remember the time, we actually flew um, Belize mm -hmm. because they were not allowed to go into the U.S. So we would um, go to Belize, to Belize and Gusagapo, Honduras, mm -hmm. to do their flight for them. I would say my vision is for us to continue to strive to achieve the status of being an airline that is small, but we are professional in how we operate, we are efficient, and we deal with our passengers in a, in a pleasant and courteous way, always, regardless of whether there is a problem. The whole travel industry is based on customer service, really. You're transporting a passenger, yes, from point A to point B, but it is how you do that that makes a difference. And I would like to see that we are an airline that gives good service in an efficient way and a professional way, in spite of the fact that we might be small. You meet passengers on a daily basis with all kinds of problems on a daily basis. And I probably, I think the, the special moments occur when someone comes back to you sometimes months later after an event which perhaps you don't even remember and they will come back to you and say thank you. Cayman Airways has not been without its challenges but with the dedication and commitment of its employees and the loyal support of the people of the Cayman Islands it has weathered many storms. I, I feel that a problem that Cayman Airways has always, has always existed. It is very difficult for a small airline the size of Cayman Airways with a small number of aircraft, with a limited size fleet, uh, to go out there on international markets and compete. But the challenges of the airlines remain the same, and, and it's always been financial. Um, the, the, the necessity for government to continue to subsidize Cayman Airways has always existed and there were times when uh, we had very difficult times in, in, uh, in, in the Legislative Assembly in trying to get approval for additional funds. major challenge was really um, the profitability. We had a four million dollar subsidy and that's basically all we got and within that um, the board and I uh, had to basically uh, the break even occasionally made a bit of profit occasionally a bit of loss uh, the challenge was really to keep it flying and I was happy to say that during the 92 to 2000 all staff salaries were reviewed brought up to date um, you know, I was very happy with my time in there 
I remember back in the beginning, we used to do everything. We used to do uh, reservations and write tickets and uh, at flight time, we would come to the airport and, and do the, the weight and balance, we called it then. And so that was the operations department. And um, I, I think the major challenge was, uh, was uh, the aftermath of, of Hurricane Ivan. Ivan uh, created a new challenge with uh, wreaking havoc and, uh, and, and picking up the pieces after the fact, really, was a challenge, and, and restarting our service. Yeah, the terminal itself was unusable at the time, um, following the hurricane, and uh, after looking uh, at, at the runway and the airport condition, we decided to use the Cayman Airways hangar which also suffered severe damage as, as the terminal, so to speak. And, and you know, from there on, it was, uh, it seemed like uh, um, an eternity, but I think we existed from that facility for about four days and finally moved back into the Owen Roberts uh, terminal. And, uh, but it was, it was definitely a challenge, you know, the lack of a lot of things that we were accustomed to, but uh, we were able to assemble our team and to start operations from the hangar, like I said, on Tuesday midday. Thankfully, we were able to pull that off. Over the years, offices have been located in various locations in the Georgetown area. Today, the Cayman Airways headquarters are located at 91 Owen Roberts Drive and houses all but two of its departments. One of the departments, which is not located at headquarters, is maintenance and engineering, which is located across the street, and that's where we chatted with Vice President Fabian Worms. Most people would tend to think that the maintenance department is a group centered around working on the aircraft, repairing the aircraft. That's very easy for people to, to have a vision of, but there really is much more to it than that. The maintenance and engineering department is really 10 functional areas that have come together to keep aircraft serviceable. Our production group, the vast majority of our staff is in Grand Cayman. We also do our heavy maintenance in Costa Rica. We also have maintenance support arrangements at all our outstations in the United States and throughout the Caribbean, all our destinations. So again, the people who work on the aircraft, that's the production team. Now, there are two, two types of work that these people will accomplish on the aircraft. Planned work, which is preventative maintenance, maintenance that's done in accordance with our maintenance program, and rectification work for defects that arise outside of planned maintenance. Now, for the production unit to function well, there's also a unit that functions, their, their sole function is to plan efficiently the maintenance tasks. Now, before the planning department can um, implement the maintenance program, another unit has to design the maintenance program, and that's the engineering unit. So the engineering unit looks at the manufacturer's recommendations for the engines, the airframe, and the components, and that unit will compile an appropriate maintenance program for our operation. This means our maintenance program would be completely different from the maintenance program from an operator who is operating in the Midwest of the United States. All right. There is also the materials unit, which is really split in two. There is a procurement side, a purchasing unit, and there is also a store side, an inventory management unit. Another important area is our training department. Our training department also has the added responsibility of managing our technical library. The technical library contains all of our instructions to do all the work. And the training department is involved in training the staff to use these instructions carefully. We also have a facilities and ground support equipment unit whose job it is to maintain our facilities and the equipment that we use to maintain and support the aircraft. Now, everything that we do is highly regulated. We have to conform to standards laid down by the Cayman Islands Civil Aviation Authority. And in doing this, um, somebody has to ensure that we're continuously meeting those standards. We have to continuously be in compliance. 
So for that reason now we have a quality assurance department. So it's it's a really comprehensive system that's involved in keeping the aircraft well maintained. It's way more than just someone being out there with a wrench, um, you know, replacing a part or rectifying a defect. Over 40 years for any organization is quite an achievement. From those early days, Cayman Airways has grown by leaps and bounds. Today, it employs over 300 persons. With a current fleet of three 737-300s, one 737-200, and two twin otters, Cayman Airways continues to play a critical role in the ongoing growth and development of these islands. With the financial and tourism sectors, the bedrock of the island's economy, regular, safe, and efficient transportation to and from the Cayman Islands remain an important factor. Looking forward and, and not just not just for my personal career because that is in, in nearing its ending stage. But I would like to see the fundamentals of, of Cayman Airways change. For the airline to go forward, it needs to become a commercial venture as a commercial entity on its own plan on its own. Plan what what makes money for the airline, what does not make money. And, and all the other things that go with that when you make decisions based on a commercial basis. That's my dream for Cayman Airways, that we can be a professional and efficient airline with a solid route structure, which I'd like to see include, and I think isn't out of the question, at least a route to Europe. Um, I think that's possible with them before I hang up the clouds, so I'd love, love to see that. I think all in all, if the local people can support the airline, Cayman Airways, that's our 
I would think that's the main source that we need for the airline to continue to operate successfully. But with the support of the Caymanian people, I think the airline can continue to grow. And one day before I get hung up my gloves, I'd like to see one year we say we made money. So what does the future hold for the national airline of the Cayman Islands? When we took over, we, we wanted Cayman Airways to operate as much as a business as it could. We wanted to have less reliance on government subsidy. We wanted to be able to have our house in order, whereby when criticisms and when examinations come, we can hold our hands up, and we can hold our heads up high and say, we've done it properly. We've done it according to proper business practices. We've conducted ourselves as a properly run corporation, and we are okay. And that is what we've been trying to achieve, and that is what we should continue to aim for, because we, we serve several masters and in serving so many different aspects of this country and our community, we will always not please everyone. But if we can actually say we've done everything that we can properly internally, then we'll be okay to face the external forces. And that's really what we need to continue to do. Well, the government has given Cayman Airways its, its mandate. And the mandate, of course, is to be an economic driver. Uh, to maintain an air bridge to our sister islands, to ensure that we have uh, and maintain strategic airlift to our tourism markets, and of course as an insurance policy for the country. These are very important um, objectives and it's a very important mandate for the national flag carrier, and it certainly differentiates it from, from many other airlines, many of which are privately owned and simply set up uh, for business purposes. Cayman Airways, as we know, uh, has certainly been there through the difficult times, it's been there to ensure our economic continuity. And so it is so important that we get our customer service right and that we have consistent customer service and that we provide the level of service for our customers that they expect. We position this destination in a certain way and people expect the very best service when they come to the Cayman Islands. Cayman Airways, the national airline of the Cayman Islands, operating since 1968 and still flying high.